it's time to start talking about upper cupboards. That's what I'm going to start building now. And I'm going to build them in a way that probably no one has ever built upper cupboards in all of Vandom before. So come on along with me and I'll explain to you why and how. Welcome to vanofaction.com where we're taking a 2018 Dodge Promaster van and converting it to a family camper. Here we're sharing the journey and today we're talking about the upper kitchen cabinets and we're doing it in a way that most people have never done it before. In fact, we've never seen anyone do it this way before. You may find it interesting and if you do, please subscribe, like and share. We don't post regularly and you might like to know when we're doing it. Come on along for the ride. In every van build, weight is a concern. We try to build as light as we can. That only makes sense, but it has to be built strong too. The upper cupboards, we're gonna have three of them. We're gonna have one over the foot of the bed over our feet, one over the kitchen cupboard, and one behind the driver's seat over the window. Those cabinets will be built, will be broken into separate compartments, but there'll be three separate cabinets. And by their nature, these upper cupboards are really flimsy. They've just got a couple of little sticks holding things, holding all the weight. And as you drive down the highway, that's gonna be shaky. You gotta be careful. A lot of folks you see online building with solid wood, either one by twos or two by twos. To me, over time, that's a mistake. Probably the most, the strongest way to do it would be to use 80-20 aluminum extrusions, but that gives you a, uh, an architectural design that, that's not in keeping with what I'm doing. So I'm going to be building mine differently. I'm going to be building mine out of plywood because plywood doesn't shrink. Plywood, because of the multiple layers going in opposite directions, is really strong and it's really stable. I first anchored a solid piece of plywood to the ribs of the roof of the van using jack nuts and then I anchored a piece of plywood to the side rail of the van using jack nuts as well. This would give me the two strong structural connections for the top and the bottom. Then it was a question of establishing a line for the front of the cabinet and I did that using the small pieces of wood and then the bottom pieces were uh, small pieces as well with uh, clamping them at the where they they met allowed me to adjust things so that I could just use my line of sight, even use some tape measures, use uh, whatever I could use to try and figure out which line was going to look best. And I discovered that there was absolutely nothing straight about the side of the van. It was going to be a little more work than I thought it was going to be. This has really been a hoot. I'm laying out the top cupboards and nothing in the van is straight. Got a plywood box up against the wall, and I'll tell you what, it's as solid as a rock. There's no question about it. This thing isn't going anywhere. It doesn't have any doors, though. It doesn't have any doors. My initial plan was to build the box, take it down, cut the doors out, and then I'm going to be, I'm going to be covering this box with uh, cedar, a cedar veneer, basically, a heavy veneer. I thought I would do that, take it down and do that, and then mount, remount it again. But as I was building it, I came to realize that that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I had to build it in place and I had to put the laminate on in place. Ta-da! What's up? I'm going to have to change the way I'm doing this, though. My idea was to build a plywood box because there's nothing stronger than plywood when it comes to really skinny little pieces. If this was just a little, three little pieces of cedar trying to hold up this case, I, over time it would just fall apart. But this is nice and solid. I can hang off of this. It's as solid as a rock. It's bolted to the ceiling, bolted to the walls. The idea was to build the plywood box, cut the doors out, then cut holes in the bottom just to reduce the weight, and then wrap the whole thing with a cedar veneer so that it looked like a very fine piece of furniture when it was done, but it'd be solid as a rock and strong. The, so the solid part's done, but I, my, my, I thought my plan was going to be to build the box in place and then take it down, wrap it in the veneer, and then put it back up again. But I'll tell you what. There's nothing straight about this van. I see people building these box, these uh, cover, upper cupboards on the shop floor and then carrying them in and putting them up. I have no idea how they do that because this thing, even over four and a half feet, is as crooked as the van, as crooked as can be. It tapers into the back end. It gets wider partway through. The ceiling is, goes up this way. I don't know how people can build a box like that and then screw it into place after, like, after it's built. But anyway... I would have to change my method for the second one, understanding the way it's going to go together now. So let's see how that works. This top kitchen cover is going to run from the bedroom cubby all the way to the end of this board. And it'll hang out over top of the door a little bit, which is going to create a, a few issues of its own. I'm not sure how we're going to deal with that either. But I'm going to change the way that I'm doing this one this time. So just, just bear with me. And if it works, I'll explain it afterwards. 
I already had the front line of the cabinet established with the piece I'd anchored firmly and carefully to the roof of the van, so now I anchored the back rail to the body of the van, and the two out pieces sticking out are just simply going to form the bottom of the cabinet. I made sure I had them in exactly the right place, and then I went and cut a blank sheet of plywood for the cabinet front. When I hung it on the on the top, it could you know, I get positioned exactly where it needed to go. Then it was just a matter of measuring and cut, laying out the door openings to match the other cupboard. Check it out. This is amazing, isn't it? This is the whole front of the cabinet, all out of one piece of wood. Imagine if this little piece and this little piece were two different individual pieces of wood, and you tried to fasten them together at the corner in a way that was going to stand up going down the highway down a bumpy road. Not a chance. This is going to be a really nice and really nice and solid. I'm going to anchor it to this piece, which is bolted to the rib of the ceiling with my my, my jack nuts. Spectacular. I know exactly where it's supposed to go. All I have to do is put it up there. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. That's going to be great. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it. I've got the cabinets all framed out in plywood. They're really strong, really rigid, and anchored really well to the body of the van. They're not going anywhere at all, but they don't look that good. They don't look very nice at all. I've got to cover them up with something. When we were in Ontario planning the van originally, we we're going to use aluminum, A8020 aluminum extrusions for the framing, and then some kind of a high-tech plastic to, uh, for, the, for the finishing up. It's going to look pretty, I thought it was going to look pretty modern, pretty neat, but we moved out into the interior of British Columbia because of the pandemic. And because of the pandemic, we wanted to try, <clears throat> excuse me, we wanted to try and, and buy as much locally as we can. And right here in the upper Okanagan Valley, logging is a very big and important part of the local economy. In fact, two, two members of our family work in the logging industry or the forest industry. And so we wanted, I wanted to buy local lumber. So those upper cupboards are very strong and very pretty and very light. And one of the reasons they're light was I, this is a piece of one by six V-match tongue and groove cedar, the exactly the same product that's used on the ceiling. Now in this particular video, I want to point out the ceiling has four coats of finish on it. The cabinets don't. They'll end up being very similar in color when it's, when I'm finished with it. In any event, this is the same material that was used on the ceiling. This is the profile. I didn't need material that thick on my cabinets because they're, they're already a structure there. This is just decoration I'm putting on. And I didn't want to add the, the extra weight. So this is what I did. I cut the, using my table saw, and anyone with a table saw can do this very easily. I took my table saw and I cut off the tongue and I cut off the groove from each sheet. And then I turned the sheet 90 degrees and I ripped it in its width to end up with two thin pieces of cedar. So every piece of one by six became this. Very light, very pretty. And then using my table saw again, I manufactured a groove. It's just one saw blade wide, one pass over the saw, a groove into each edge. And then I manufactured out of some spruce I had laying around, some spline material to fit into those saw cuts. And then on my gluing table, which is just a piece of plywood screwed to the workbench, straight edge on one side and wedge blocks on the other, I put the pieces together, glue them to back up together with the splines in the middle. This is what it looked like. A beautiful piece of cedar. It's gonna go on the end of the cabinet on the, path of the driver's side. And that piece of wood weighs about two pounds. The ups and downs between the door frames, what I did was I, I took that same lumber and remachined it so that I could just wrap it around the, the, the post as they went up. And the bottoms of the cabinets and the ends of the cabinets, I just used this, these pieces and put them on. And this is what it looked like. Now, one of the beauties of doing it this way is I, when I take a piece of wood that looks like this, and turn it into a piece of wood that looks like this, what I've done is I've cut my weight in half. 
I've cut the amount of wood I'm using in half. The wood's going twice as far. So the cost is half. Weight's half, cost is half. It's a labor intensive bit of work, but you know, I've got the time to do it. So it's gonna look wonderful, it's gonna be less expensive. And the first batch of wood I did this way paid for my surface planer. So I end up with a tool I can use in the future and it's already been covered in the savings I've made in the material. My vision of the inside of this van is that when it's finished, it'll feel like a, a fine yacht when you enter it. The cabinetry has to be built to a very high standard. And that means a lot of consideration for how this skin is applied. Every piece is thought about. There's no exposed end grain. There's no exposed fasteners. And also every piece is considered as you put it on. You, I've matched up dark pieces. I've matched up light pieces. Every piece has been, been applied at a certain sequence. First in this cabinet, as in with all the top cabinets, the outside corners were done first. So they run all the way through. And then the vertical, the horizontal pieces were put on second. So they run to the outside corners. And then the center divider was put on last. That same style is carried through on this unit. Now there's going to be a, a couple of doors on here in places. This is going to be the Berkey cabinet, and that's going to be a pull-out uh, stove uh, bin for our, our plates and things. But again, the outside pieces went floor to ceiling first. Then the horizontal pieces went on. And then the vertical pieces. Now, in this particular case, it was a horizontal, the two outside corners, a horizontal piece, a horizontal piece, and then this vertical piece between them, and then this horizontal piece between those. Definite sequence, definitely picked for color and grain matching. Also, and I might be a little bit anal about this, but I have my solid wood return. There will be a door in front of this, but my solid cedar return on this corner mullion, and then a solid piece of wood on the corner. And I want to start with a full piece of one by six on this corner. That's just the way you do it. It's the proper thing to do is start with a full piece of one by six with an outside mitered corner, so there's no, no exposed end grain. It looks like all one piece of wood, but it's not. Full piece here. That's great. But as you enter the van, you want a full piece on this corner too, because that's right, that's the way it should be. A full piece here, a full piece here, and then as you return to the end, this is where the piece will be cut in, the odd size piece. So how do you do that? Well, you start full pieces at each corner, work to the middle, and then the center one is where you make the adjustment. See, this really makes me smile. I like to look at Don't that. you love it when you can save money and do the job at the same time? It's just, it's just super. So what I've done is I've, I've got all this lumber ready to go on the plywood. I want to install it. So I'm going to glue it on for sure. This is kiln dried stock. It's not going to grow and shrink. It's not going to warp or twist. It may expand a little bit if it, on a hot day, but it's not, that, that'll be negligible. But I want to, I'm going to glue it onto my plywood. But because we're in a van and we're driving down the highway and it's shaking like crazy, I'm not comfortable just relying on glue. So I want to mechanically fasten it as well. That's going to be a challenge because it's quite thin. And I don't want any fasteners exposed. The same as on the ceiling. I want this to look like a, a nice piece of furniture, high quality, high quality cabinetry when it's done. So I don't want screws sticking out all over the place. So how, this is how I did that. I took these skinny pieces of wood and I went to the local lumber yard, not hard to find, and I bought a plug cutter, looks like this. And I bought a drill that'll drill exactly the size of hole the plug cutter cuts a plug for. They just fit together. Sometimes they come as a set. Lee Valley would sell them as a set but it's possible to buy them individually as well. With these two tools, you can drill a hole anywhere you want in the field of your wood, and you can put a screw in it and fasten it and hide the screw when it's done. This is what it looks like. Here's a sample that I put together. There's two little pit bits of waste wood. I put the joints together. I drilled little holes with the, the, the bit, the little holes with the bit, and then I cut plugs with the plug, and put the plugs in, and this is what it looks like when they're finished. Now, if you're careful, 
You can select wood that's a, the plugs that are the same color, make sure the grain lines up, and you'll do a really good job of hiding your screws. You'll never make them completely invisible, but you'll make them invisible to the first glance. People will have to look at them, look for them to actually find them. It's a process. This is how it looks like as you put them together. Now I have the plywood cases completely wrapped in cedar. The uprights, the bottoms, the ends, everything's wrapped in cedar. It's all done. I've got a couple of coats of urethane on it, and it start, it's ready to, for the doors. As I'm doing this, and I have the cedar ceiling and the cedar on the cabinets, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm getting a lot of cedar in here, and if I put cedar doors on, it's going to start to look a little bit over the top for me. And making, I didn't want to make just a solid cedar panel door, five eighths of an inch thick flat. I wanted, I didn't think that would look right. I wanted something, I didn't, I wanted something that was going to look a little more elegant, a little more finished. So I decided to go with a cedar frame door and then have some kind of a panel on the inside. And I thought about, when I started doing the vinyl, I thought maybe I'd put vinyl panels on, but I also wanted something to add a little texture and ideally something that would be a little sound absorbent as well. So in conversations with my family, my daughter came up with the idea of maybe adding some caning material to the panels. And this is the kind of caning material that they put on chairs. You can buy it by the roll. And I bought this from a company in Ontario. And uh, I thought, you know, that might look kind of sweet. That could be a nice idea to add a little, a little texture, a little shadow effect. It should absorb a little bit of sound because it has a, it'll create air pockets, which should be good. And this is what a finished product looks like. I took a, I took the same cedar that we've been working with all along, those pieces, cut off the tongue of the groove, manufactured them to be straight and square, and then started uh, putting, make, making the doors. In this case, it wasn't just a matter of figuring out how many doors I needed and then making them up. I picked out every piece of wood so that the same piece of wood runs across the top of every door on one side. The same piece of wood run, runs across the bottom. And the complementary doors go, or pieces go up and down. Those are the subtle things that a cabinet maker will do that will make a person say, you know, there's something about that that is just really special. It looks really nice. I'm not sure, I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, but it looks balanced, it looks nice. The grain runs the same way. The flower of the grain goes in the same direction on every piece of wood. It's important to take a look at that, and I did. So it was, a, it was painstaking, it was time consuming, but my time's free, so that's just the way it is. This is a finished door. And the caning material is mounted on a piece of veneer core quarter inch plywood that I painted a light blue because the light blue will pick up the blue in the vinyl. Well, I experimented with a couple of colors and uh, the blue seemed to be best. It made it lighter. It didn't, I didn't want it to be too dark. That's what the doors look like. And come on, I'll show you what they look like in the van. So here we are. These are the cubbies. The three front ones are the kitchen. The two back ones are for our clothes. And you'll see that I I machined a bit of a thumb groove here because as it opens, I didn't want the handle to be hitting the ceiling. So we got a nice little, nice little up and down there. It's gonna hold it open just fine. And now these hinges, you could spend $20 a hinge if you want to. I bought these at Home Depot. They were $4 a hinge. They've got a little piston spring. It actually holds the door open. It's good that way. Closes tight. Uh, this way, I don't need a ram. You can buy, you can spend $20 on a hinge. You can spend $15 or $20 on a hydraulic ram to hold the door open. I got it all done for $8 a door, which is great. And then to hold it shut, I bought the little spring guy again at Home Depot and We've been on the road once and it seems to be working just fine. I contacted cement. I use contact cement to, to attach the caning material to the plywood behind. And there's places where I didn't adhere a fully. So I'm going to have to spend a little time fixing that up. It's no big deal. It's going to take care of it just fine. Now the end of the cabinet. And again here. If you look close, you will see the plugs. Where the screws went in. From a distance, it looks pretty good. Underneath, again, if you look close, you can see the plugs 
And here I am coming in the door of the van. This is the kitchen cupboard that overhangs the door a little bit. And these are the cubbies above. And I wanted to just show you the grain, if you can see it. The grain on the bottom, the flower of the grain, is the same piece of wood from one to the other for the whole length. Every door, they all fit together. Come back the other way, same thing. Same piece of wood, so the grain lines, the grain runs through. And this is four pieces of the thin wood all laminated together. Looks rich. And I use that same detail around the windows. And here, unfortunately, I picked out a couple of plugs that didn't match exactly. And here's a couple that have yet to be chiseled off and finished as I go along. Again, the thumb. And I use these same hinges on the sides. So these cabinets now look like they're made of cedar. They look fantastic. I'm really pleased with them. But underneath is the plywood frame. Solid as a rock. So I've had a number of people suggest to me that maybe I'm adding way too much weight to these cab to this van because the cabinets look heavy, and they, they do look heavy, I understand that. But in reality, the way I built them, they are extremely strong, and they're still very, very light. All together, I'm going to have less than three sheets of three-quarter inch plywood in all the cabinets and all the structure. That's the ceiling framing, the wall framing, the cabinet framing, both top and bottom, the wall unit built all in is going to be less than three sheets of three quarter inch plywood each sheet weighs about i think about 65 70 pounds tops tops if that much and i'm going to have one sheet of five eighths plywood for the building of all the upper cabinets that sheet weighs 50 55 pounds so all in i haven't added 200 pounds of weight to this three quarter ton truck to get all the framing in all the cabinets and all the all the structure and that's all it is